Space, the final frontier. My name is Captain Foley, and these are my adventures. Captain's Log, Stardate 69883.81, or 2015111.18. Welcome back, everyone. It is time for another Captain Foley, Captain's Log. Sounds really dirty. But anyway, uh, today I'm going to be addressing the comments, questions on my last Captain's Log, as well as a few on my Captain's Log supplemental. I don't usually do that. The supplementals are more for, it's just a quick... Uh, video where I either want to show you something or just chat about something real quick. So I usually won't read comments from supplementals. However, there were some good ones on the last one, so I'm going to include them this time. But next time, if you watch a Captain's Log supplemental and you want to comment uh, that you want me to read or address uh, on my next Captain's Log, please go to my last Captain's Log and refer to the supplemental in your comment. Uh, then I'll definitely get to it. So let's get underway, shall we? There's a few things I want to talk about today after uh, I've addressed all these. And there's only about 24, 25 or so after the supplementals are included. So it's not that long. Won't be too bad. So so Carl Edwards says, what's your name in Star Trek Online? I also play. All right. If you guys want to find me on Star Trek Online, just type in Stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T, at Night Stalker with a K-666. So Night Stalker, K-N-I-G-H-T-S-T-A-L-K-E-R-666. Uh, now you might be thinking, that's an odd name. Well, it's just my gamer tag. I've had it since I was in high school. Night Stalker was the one. But then everybody took Night Stalker. Uh, so I won Night Stalker 74, the year I was born. But that was usually taken. So to just change it up a bit and have it so nobody has it, I went Night Stalker-666. And it seemed to usually, well, it usually works. So that's why it is. Don't get offended by it or anything. It's not that I'm into Satan or anything like that. It's just it's just my gamer tag and it's intimidating sounding because you gotta be intimidated in a game, don't you know? Next is from Dontles 1992. Thank you for answering my question and I watch almost all of your videos but I did not find anything about Jaeger type ship. Uh, can I ask why that is uh, as it appears in DS9 and in an episode I think called Sacrifice of Angels. Samuel and I discussed the Jaeger class ship in our uh, Maquis Raider episode. Uh, check that out if you haven't. We discussed the Jaeger class a little bit in that episode because it's confusing. Because um, the, the Maquis class, or the Maquis ship is so small compared to the Voyager, yet they scaled up the Maquis hull and space frame to attach it to an Intrepid class ship uh, component. It just doesn't make sense. Why would they scale up a smaller ship? We discussed it in detail. Um, ish. We will do an episode on the Jaeger class, I'm sure, some point down the road. But no, there is no episodes for that yet. But if you want any kind of... If you want to hear Samuel and I talk about the Jaeger class, definitely check out the Maki Raider episode. Okay, and we will get to it eventually, so don't worry. Daniel McCool, thank you for the log entry, Captain. And Beeblebox is a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference. Are you up for a rousing game of Boki and Ultra Cricket? Yeah, I got the Beetlebrox uh, reference after the fact. I felt like a bit of an idiot. I didn't get it at the time, but thank you. Carmelo Ailman, uh, Mellotron. I have a couple of questions. Number one, do you play Star Trek Armada 3, the mod for the Sins of the Solar Empire? Pyre? Also, do you think that future Trek Yards episodes, you could cover the Excalibur class? Yes and yes are the basic, simple answers for those. I have, I do have Sins of the Solar Empire and the Armada 3 mod installed on my computer. I've tried playing it. The graphics are phenomenal. I can't get into it very much. I'm not a big fan of the graphical interface. I never played Sins of the Solar Empire on its own, so I never got used to it. And I'm used to the regular Armada 2 interface. So I'm very confused by it. I haven't had much time to play games, unfortunately. Uh, and generally with that game, when I get about 20, 25 minutes into it and I have a fleet established and I'm ready to go do things, the game just quits. It just crashes on me. So I've had to like save my game and hopefully load it up again uh, after it crashes. So I've had problems with it and I've just not bothered playing it after that. So that's the answer for that. Yes, I do have it installed and the graphics are phenomenal. I would love to get into it. I would love to be able to figure out how to play it and actually enjoy the game. But... Um, as it stands right now, I don't really enjoy the game. I just, the, the, the interface just really bugs me and it's confusing. I don't know what to do half the time to get the ships I want and stuff. So, there you go. And as for the Excalibur class, yes, we'll probably end up doing a, every ship eventually. 
And the Excalibur class is an interesting looking ship. So yeah, it definitely will be something that we could do down the road. Han Sebi. And coming back to my episode 77 Nebula class comment. Thank you for responding in this captain's log. I must say I can understand your side fully. I know workloads and how real life can bite you sometimes. Plus, I was less judgmental on my third and uh, sixth rewatch of this episode. Again, thanks and good that you're good. I'm not really sure what he's referring to. I'll have to go back and check the comments on my <laughs> Nebula class episode. But yeah, thank you for the shout out. Anyway, MS7. Looks like I'll have to start playing Star Trek Online now. Yes, you do. Get a character, join our fleet, become one with Trek Yards as we conquer the universe. I was jumpy. I was going to say the galaxy, then the universe, but I'm starting with the universe. And then all oh, parallel universes. Ah! I'll talk more about Star Trek Online when I get to my other list. Andrew Hopkins. Could not agree more about the lack of progress in the space program. Can't wait for the new Technic Manual to add to my library. Yes, last time I talked about the, the space program, uh, NASA's space program, and uh, it is a shame. But as for the new technical manual done by Cal uh, Schnatz Jr., amazing. I've got draft two now. I'm do, acting as a proofreader and uh, correspondent on it, uh, like collaborator. Um, so Trek Yards is mentioned in there. The Trek Yards patch is in there. And Captain Foley is mentioned, as well as uh, Commander Cockings. He'll be mentioned also. So definitely... Um, Look forward to that. We plan on trying. We plan on selling it within our truck yard store, which we're going to establish soon. Uh, we want to sell some, do pre-sales of some shirts and some patches and things like that. And then once we get the the uh, ball rolling, then we can get the stuff shipped out. So we want to do shirts, patches, initially, and then maybe a few other things. If you're an artist and you want to help us out with designing shirts and stuff, please contact us at trekyards at hotmail.com and let us know. Or visit the Facebook page, the Trek Yards Facebook page, and give us a shout out just saying that you're an artist and you want to help. That would be phenomenal. I think we're going to do that later today. We're going to post on the Trek Yards site uh, page that we're looking for other artists and stuff to create new shirt designs. We've got a few in mind that we've come up with, and they're pretty good, and we're looking to do some more. So, something to look forward to. Zeldrak, I asked for a Nebula class video and I got two of them. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I'll just pretend they are made especially for me. Please do that. Uh, we do aim to please. And uh, yeah, once we released the mission briefing, it was just natural to release the Trek Yards Live where Andrew talks about it. But there's a funny story behind that whole Andrew and Trek Yards Live thing that I'll tell you in a little bit. Um, so stay tuned. Because, yeah, anyway, <laughs> it's on my list over there. Shermanator1989, I'm already a part of the Axanar Squadron on Star Trek Online. Would it be wrong for me to create a new character, join Trek Yards with it, and be involved with two fleets? Do fleets in the same fraction, faction ever fight each other? No, it would not be wrong. Create a new character and definitely join the Trek Yards fleet. As for fleets fighting each other, I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm not sure how the fleet dynamic works, how our armadas work, things like that. So, Timothy Champion, if you're watching this, he's in charge of the Trek Yards fleet, basically. So... If you can join an armada and become one with another fleet, if you will, that would be phenomenal. I would love to do that and become a dominant force in Star Trek Online. So we're going to, the fleet thing we're kind of slowly moving into. And I, like I said, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So Chris Walton, always like Gabe's redesign myself. Gabriel Cornier's Enterprise, of course. Another thing I like, I think you might like, is the reimagining by Vector, V-E-K-T-O-R which is more of a detailed version of the classic ship. Hope you're having a good day and look forward to more from you guys. Really happy to hear that the top tens are here to stay as I'm enjoying the opinion-based discussion as a nice contrast to our regular dose of Trek Yards facts, figures, and theories. Well, of course, in our regular Trek Yards episode with fact, fi facts, figures, and theories, we, of course, have our discussion, which is our opinions anyway. But, yeah, I've got a lot of static about the top tens. Uh, we have because they're not... Um, really top tens they're more of the top five because a lot of the things we pick it's hard to find 10 things to actually create a list on uh five is a pretty good number so it's basically 10 it's my choices and samuel's choices so i've been getting f static and flack about that for a while now 
and it's not muchly appreciated, but just thought I'd throw it out there. We do our best, and uh, yeah. As for the Enterprise he talked about, Vector's Enterprise, that's the one there. And it is a beautiful ship. Ooh, look at that. So, if you haven't checked it out, Vector, V-E-K-T-O-R, uh, Enterprise Reimagining. It looks beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I've, I've seen it before, and yes, yes. I would probably choose that one above Gabe's. Now, we've been in talks with Gabe. I actually talked to him uh, two days ago. He's kind of... He said his ship is a touchy subject for him to talk about, so I don't know what that means exactly. We just want to have a Skype call with him and uh, sit down and chat and kind of figure out some kind of way that we could fig figure his ship into our show. We love doing an episode on it. I'm sure a lot of you would like to see it. I want to see it because it's one of my favorite redesigns. So we're, we're in talks with Gabe to actually get him on the show, so stay tuned. That may be coming down the road. Uh, so, yes. Uh, okay, the next one is from Chris Martin. My great-grandfather served on the Navy's USS Shangri-La. That's awesome. Uh, and yes, the Shangri-La episode, the Trekkers episode with Bill Krause's Shangri-La ship is going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to that. We still need to have a Skype call with Bill uh, to talk about that and get that all sorted out. But we do have all of his pictures, all of his sh ship information. So that's on the to-do list as far as script writing goes. There are a few we have to do. So... Awesome. Heath General Vader Tompkins. Hi, Captain Foley. I just want to say I love the show. You do a great job on the shows, and I love the ship-based shows and your top five shows. Fantastic. Keep up the good work. All the best to you. Thank you, Heath. Uh, much appreciated. Or, sorry, General Vader. Much appreciated. Stay tuned. There's more to come. There's always more to come. Starfleet Battles Addict. Science enthusiasts are annoyed by those who aren't into science. I'll leave out the dirty label to avoid flame wars in your feed because they are too lazy to do the work or learning to understand the science basics. Your Treknology series gets lower views for the same reason. People are too lazy to learn the science basics. You know the same people that think adding a warp nacelle adds power where it actually consumes more power but generates a stronger, larger warp field. The entire space budget from NASA's beginning to full funding out to 2020 is less than the amount spent for the savings and loans bailout, or theft, as he puts it, in the 1980s, and it's pennies from the thousand bill of the 2008 Bush-Obama bailouts or thefts. Uh, NASA's yearly budget is about two weeks of desert tent air conditioning for the U.S. military in Iraq. That's sad, but true. Yeah, we need to focus more on the space exploration, get that money dumped into stuff that's going to get us off the planet. And out in space, I think that's a great idea. I mean, it's a shame that America is so far behind the space race. <sighs> but I talked about that a little bit in my last Captain's Log. So, Suggestion. Instead of reading the start date out loud, just leave it in the vid title. No. Because my intro is, these are my adventures. And everyone is a Captain's Log. It is my official Captain's Log. So every Captain's Log starts with the Captain's Log and the start date. So all these will continue to do so. But thank you for the suggestion. Captain Lokiowa. Got it right this time. Lokiowa. When you were saying my name, I was cringing. Haha. <laughs> Lokiowa. Captain Lokiowa. If I got it right, let me know because you comment every time and I always get your name wrong. So I apologize. Yay, top tens are staying. I also love Star Wars. That's why I'm designing, drawing, writing for a new Star Trek versus Star Wars for 10 years now. I'm happy to hear about your fan design or fan made series. I never really feel up to looking up hundreds, hundreds of plus fan-made ships, etc. Today, we have a fan ship on the mission briefing. I just, I just uh, uh, launched it, uh, the USS Polaris. So check it out. It's, it's pretty, pretty fantastic. Also, this upcoming Saturday, the full Trek Yards episode is on a Star Trek Originals, where we take a fan-created ship and we do a full episode on it, like we did with the, the Terror Bird. So stay tuned for that. It's a good episode. You guys are going to enjoy it. It's a movie uh, movie picture era ship. So I won't give any more away. Wait till Saturday. And of course, tomorrow we have our top 10 being released. I'm not sure which one we're going to do, uh, but we will have a top 10 tomorrow for you guys. Okay. <clears throat> And hopefully the fan-made uh, mission briefings go over well. This is this first one with the players is just kind of a test. 
to see what the reaction's like. Um, but yeah, we do plan on doing separate mission briefings on fan-made ships. So. And Shermanator1989, this is the last one on the captain's log. There's like four or five on the uh, supplemental that I want to address. So just, we're almost done, guys. NASA might be in trouble, but the Chinese have made some impressive achievements and have quite ambitious plans. An all-Chinese space station by early 2020s because Congress refused to allow Chinese participation on the ISS. That's a shame. Also manned colonies on the moon and Mars supported by mining, for example. The Indians are in the early stages of a decent space program as well. Even the Russians are slowly getting back into the game. One would hope some foreign success will kickstart Washington to start funding NASA properly again and seek collaboration with the others. I'm not ready to give up hope yet. I agree 100%. We need to cooperate with other countries, get into space, get colonies established, mine the, mine the solar system, save the planet Earth if we can, and yeah. Anyway, so we're going to move on to the Captain's Log Supplemental, a few of those right now, and uh, we'll uh, see what you guys have to say. But before that, breaking news. I just got another comment coming to my feed from Power543. As we all know, Commander Cockings. Commander Cockings has a question for his captain. Let's see what it is. So, Cap, 10. <laughs> if Trek Yards was given a $1 million donation to make a Star Trek fan film, enough to build sets, get actors, and make something fantastic, what era would you pick? What sets would, would you prioritize to build first uh, for it? And what... And would there be any actors in the fan film community that you would love to join the project? Either as a returning character or as something new. Second part of the question, should we film a podcast on the subject, <laughs> our own fan, our own ideal fan stories? And just, and now just thinking about this, such an opportunity, it would be fantastic fun to film. Keep up the great work. As always, Captain, I love your mission logs. And even though I get to speak with you just about every day, and then smiley face, or sticky the tonguey outy face. Wow, that's quite an involved question, and just lengthens the, the, the length of this episode quite dra dramatically. There's stuff at the end of this episode that you guys need to, st to stay tuned for, but this is, I'm going to try to address this question. I would make it not TOS era. Uh, I know that Samuel was afraid I was going to say that, but no, I wouldn't. I would actually probably place it about 10 years after the Dominion War, um, sets that would be built would be Starbase sets, a bridge set for an awesome ship. I don't know exactly what the story would be or what kind of actors I would want in it. I mean, I'm sure I would want recurring actors, maybe uh, Garrett Wang to come back. Um, so there's so many. There's so many that I would want. I don't know. You, you, I can't answer that question properly. I think it definitely demands a podcast where we can bounce ideas off each other. And then we work out something really, really phenomenal. So I agree. We'll do a podcast on it. So guys, stay tuned for a podcast. I can't answer that question, but I don't want it in TOS times. There's too many TOS fan-made stuff. I love TOS. Don't get me wrong. See? Right there on the monitor. But too much of it. It's kind of saturated the market as far as fan stuff goes. So looking for something a little more progressive after the Dominion War. And I think I'd put it in the uh, JJ verse just because that'd be very new and interesting and dynamic. I'm just kidding! <laughs> I had you guys fooled for a second there. You were all like hitting the stop button and you've probably all left. So I don't even know why I'll continue. I'll just stop now. Because you've all left. No, it'd be in Prime Universe, obviously. So, all right. So we're going to move on to the Captain's Law supplemental questions now. Okay. So the first one is from Andrew Hopkins. Shouldn't it be Admiral Kirk if it's from Star Trek 3? Hope you feel better. I struggle with the same thing. Sorry to hear that, but yes, I'm feeling a little bit better today. Just I have my life off days, but yes, Con or Kirk, sorry, over here. The Star Trek Three Kirk that I unboxed basically in my last Captain's Last Planet Metal. Here's the packaging. It does say Star Trek Three. I made a point of saying that he doesn't wear his uniform much in Star Trek Three, so it's kind of odd to see it, you know, the character have that. But there he is. It does say Captain Kirk on the package, even though it is Star Trek Three when he was an admiral. So good catch there. The unit, the uh, toy itself actually has Captain's bars. So good catch. I didn't even think about that, but big mistake on their part, part I guess. 
Darby Fox Conway goes on to say, Thanks for setting up the fleet. Just got my invite today and got a number of projects started. Can't wait to meet everyone in game. Yes. More talk of Star Trek Online in a moment. Join the fleet! Galvers. Yeah, why not? Captain, can you send me an invite to Sevatar? I don't know if that's already been sent. Uh, I'll try to remember to do it. If not, Timothy Champion, if you're watching, Sevatar. I assume it's at Sevatar. But anyway. Ebenezer 1690. Cool. Find capital. That's all he says. I don't know what he's referring to. Uh, capital for what? To... I don't know. Capital for what? I don't know. Please elaborate. Capital, like Samuel just said, a million dollars for a new Trek Yard series? Or a new Star Trek series? The Mouse Trap 1. Couldn't find your Team Trek Yard fleet on Star Trek Online. I have four characters. Two Federation, one Klingon, and one Romulan alien. I'm more role player than Gear Whore, so I don't have the best of anything in game. So, yeah. Um, I don't know much about the fleet dynamic. I don't know what you can contribute and what you can't contribute and how contributing works and how you move from Tier 1 to Tier 2. I don't understand all that. That's why I have Timothy in charge of the fleet. So, we're getting there. Like I said, more about that in a minute. Okay, and then uh, Truby Howard. <laughs> hey, Stuart, to pronounce my name, say it like this, Truby. I've been calling him Truby Howard forever now. I met, had the pleasure of meeting Truby at uh, Wonderfest. I met his, him and his wife. He donated some stuff to the Trek Yards cause, which I've really enjoyed. Uh, and it's actually mentioned in a past captain's log. But Truby, Truby, there, now I know Truby. I keep saying Truby, and I apologize. Truby, Truby Howard. There we go. I love all the Captain's Log and Trek Yards episodes. I'm going to go back and rewatch Captain's Logs and Trek Yards episodes to remember some of my questions now that I have my YouTube working. That'll be awesome. I should actually rewatch some old Trek Yards or Captain's Log episodes too. See how much how far I've come. I'm probably not that far. But and Trevi, thank you very much for your donations to the uh, Trek Yards Facebook page. You're always donating or always posting pictures and schematics from books and things, and we really appreciate that. Um, so. And this is the last one. Andrew Sean Powell. Hi, Captain. My fleet is in the same boat. I'm a lifetime Endgame member, and some of my members are level 62, but the rest are below, which we like as we can assist more. We're nearly Tier 2 on Starbase, Tier 1 for everything else. Uh, if you'd like to be our Gamma fleet, then please find me, my fleet in-game, Area 31, and my members, and I would love to help your fleet out and your members... And help mine out. Uh, the starting of our own federation. That's brilliant. I love it. Area 31, look us up. Timothy, Area 31. I'm not sure how our armadas work or helping out other fleets. So please, please, if you know, hop onto Star Trek Online, join this Trek Yards fleet, Team Trek Yards, and let's get this fleet a powerful dominating force in the Star Trek Online community. Let's join other fleets and whatnot and do things. Urgh. Okay, that's it for those. So like I said, supplemental logs I don't usually go into, but I uh, thought I'd read some of those. Please, next time, just find my last captain's log and comment on it, because every comment or question pretty much gets addressed in a captain's log. The supplementals aren't, aren't designed for that. So Now, Star Trek Online. We've been talking about it a little bit. <laughs> I'm really trying to play more. I have, I've, I've been on the game since you had to pay for it. I got the collector's edition. I had a Constitution class ship before you could just get them in game. They were special to the collector's edition. I got the pin and everything. So I've been had, had Star Trek Online for a long time. Never really play that much. Never have time to play. Uh, my brother's always on me to, to play more, and I'd love to. So now that we have a fleet, I'm trying to get on there at least every day just for a couple minutes just to see what's going on. Uh, check out the fleet. Uh, Starbase. So, yes, if you want to join me in game, please, Stuart at Nightstalker 666. And I will add you as a friend. And it is Team Trek Yards for the fleet. I don't know if, how you can find the fleet to join. Uh, I don't know if you need an invite, but we will be inviting people. Go to this Facebook page. There's a um, 
Star Trek Online handles document that you can add your name and handle to if you want to join the fleet, and we will send out invites to you. So there you go. And stay tuned in the next couple of days or weeks because we have new announcements and new guests joining us on Trek Yards. Um, at least three. We have two announcements filmed. They are two great creators from the fan community. Uh, shows I'm looking forward to, definitely. I'm not going to tell you who they are right now. You need to stay tuned for that. But So two um, exciting fan-created um, shows coming up, uh, the creators. Trust me, you've heard of them. They're big names uh, as far as fan-created content goes. And one of these, one of our special guest announcer, uh, announcements, which we haven't actually filmed the announcement for, but we've talked to him a few times already, uh, he actually worked on both uh, Star Trek Voyager and Star Trek Enterprise and a few other little things. So I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to tell you who it is. You need to stay tuned. That's just the way it is. Sorry, guys. Don't know when these announcements are coming out exactly, but they're in the queue. They're ready to go. All right, so going back to the Andrew Probert live thing with the Nebula class ship, in my last captain's log, uh, or is it the supplemental, I mentioned that we will be releasing the Decora class episode on Saturday, and then on Sunday we're going to have Andrew Probert talking to us on Trek Yards Live about the Decora class. That was not the case at all. <laughs> He's talking about the Nebula class. Uh, so Samuel watched that, and he sent me a message laughing at me, saying, ah, ha, 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 he's not talking about the decor class in that Trek Yards Live episode, you idiot. Basically, <laughs> she, he said, he's talking about the Ambassador class. And I'm like, really? Are we both retarded? Because you just said Ambassador class. It's the Nebula class. That's why we're releasing it on Sunday, because we had a mission briefing on Wednesday about the Nebula class. So what perfect time to release the Trek Yards Live then that week on the same ship, the Nebula class. So, and I, I made the joke of saying, well, at least I'm the only one that has video evidence that I'm an idiot because I said the decor class, <laughs> the Ferengi Marauder, uh, in my captain's log. So, and then Samuel said, yeah, unless you make a, a video about my screw up as well, which I just did. So we are both kind of stupid. I said the Ferengi Marauder and he said the ambassador class. When it was really the Nebula. Funny story. Thought I'd share it with you guys. So it's like a Trek Yards blooper that won't be ever seen. Because it was all via messaging. Uh, have an idea for a Christmas giveaway or a Christmas contest uh, for you guys. Christmas is coming up really quick, as we all know. And uh, I have a few items that I would love to get rid of. Uh, which are pretty interesting. I have the Movie Edition Captain Picard Collector Series from Star Trek Generations. And he's got his little pads there, the little photo album book, and his phaser. So I'm thinking of giving this away as some kind of uh, contest giveaway. Now, I'm not sure of what contests to do to give it away. I want people to submit, you know, ideas for something. I don't know what. And we would, Samuel and I would pick a winner, and then the winner would receive this as like a Christmas slash thank you Trek Yards winning thing gift. Um, but I don't know what contest. So maybe we should have a... Which contest should we do? And the, whichever one we pick is the best idea. Maybe I'll give him this. We'll give the winner this. And then I'll have to give out something else as well, once the contest gets underway. So maybe the first contest can be... This is not official yet, by the way. I'll let you know in the next week or two when I do my next captain's log as to what the contest will be because I need to talk to Samuel about it still and get some more ideas. But I welcome your ideas. Maybe we'll do that. We'll have If we get enough contest ideas, we'll have a contest for the contest ideas and the winner can receive the uh, Generations Captain Picard figure. Who knows? Let me know uh, what you guys think. All right, so... Trekyard's fleet again. If you just yeah, if you want to add your handle to the document on the Facebook page, do that. Or even if you want to put your your handle in the comments below. I'd rather you didn't. I'd rather you go to the Trekyard's Facebook page and find the uh, Trekyard Star Star Trek Online handle document and add your name to that. But if you can't do that for some reason and you can, can comment on this right now, feel free to put your handle in the bottom if you want to join the fleet. And either I or Timothy will invite you. 
All right, and uh, one of the last things I want to talk about is my ship name, the USS Executioner. Now that I'm playing more Star Trek Online, I've posted pictures of my ship on the Facebook page. And I'm like, the Executioner com coming home from uh, an important mission, blah, blah, blah. And somebody's like, is that a Terran Empire ship? Because Executioner is not really a Federation name. I've heard this ad nauseum multiple times from multiple people, and it's frustrating. <laughs> it's not a Terran ship. It's not the ISS Enterprise or ISS Executioner. It's a USS Executioner. Well, it's not a Federation name. Well, who cares? It's the name I gave it. It's the name I wanted to have. It is a smaller surgical strike cruiser that is designed to infiltrate enemy space and take out specific targets. So the USS Executioner is a perfectly suited name for it. Whether that's Starfleet name, uh, you know, I hate the naming rules for Starfleet. Like, who cares? I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm Captain Foley of the USS Executioner, and I'm on a peaceful mission. Kind of contradictory, I understand that. But at the same time, I don't know. I don't have a problem with it. I think there are other names out there that are actual, you know, names of the vengeance and stuff like that. So... I know that's JJ. Whoa, don't freak out. There's other ones. I can't think of them offhand, but that aren't necessarily a friendly type name for a first meeting or a peaceful encounter. But who cares? Really? At least it's not the USS Hitler or something. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk about are these super sanding blocks. Uh, my friend uh, Dave over at Blatt Models, we all call him Blappy. And his buddy Anthony Goodman, they're all, they're both friends of mine, have designed these super sanding blocks. Now, this channel was started as a Star Trek model building uh, YouTube channel. And I do build models. I'm in the process of building the 350 refit. I have been for months. Haven't had a chance to work on it. Which is annoying because I really want to. And I want to get it finished. So there are model building videos on here. There's a whole playlist of video of models I've built. Many, most of which are Star Trek. So check that out as well if you're interested. But if you're a model builder, these sanding blocks are phenomenal. They're all color coded. There's a legend that tells you what grit they are. They're all waterproof, so for wet sanding you can use them, except for the 80 grit, the green one. That's not waterproof. But all the other ones are waterproof, so you can wet sand. Perfectly flat surface, so getting perfectly flat seams or 90 degree angles. Uh, you just set this on the table and then you, you line your piece up and you get a perfectly straight uh, sand on it. And they're phenomenal. They they last a long time. They're a great idea. They're 20 bucks plus shipping. They're available at Blatt Models on Facebook. I will have a link in the description below to his site. Uh, and you can contact him directly to get these. I encourage you, if you're a model builder, to try them out. They're definitely... They're definitely a great addition to your uh, tools. So I just want to help him out a little bit. He, I've done a, I've done a review on these on my Captain Foley reviews. I did it a little while ago, so check that out as well, uh, where I go a little bit more in detail about them. But um, yeah, so check out uh, Blatt Models in the description below if you're interested. Twenty bucks plus shipping. And they are a great idea. And if you know anybody that's a model builder and you're looking for a Christmas gift for them or something, this would make a great, great little thing for them. And so I definitely encourage you guys to check it out. Anyway, that's about all I have for today. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Like I said, we do want to start a Star Trek store or a Trek Yard store. Nothing will be available before Christmas. We might have the store up and running before then, but we'll be taking pre-orders for shirts and things like that, and badges, or patches, sorry. And, uh, like I said, Cal's probably going to be selling his technical manual on on our Trekyard store, so that's exciting. This techni technical manual is phenomenal, guys. I've got drafts uh, two already, which is 75 pages, and since then he's added a lot more to it. And he sends me like the pictures and stuff ahead of time, Ask me for suggestions, so we've been collaborating. Well, it's mainly all him. I just give little suggestions here and there and do some proofreading and stuff for him. But, man, it's phenomenal. If you like the Franz Joseph technical manual, this one's in full color. It is phenomenal. He posts a lot of his stuff on the Trek Yard site, so you can see exactly what it's going to look like as far as the ship pages go and things. Plus, he's got his own uh, Facebook, pa uh, Facebook page, which is Starfleet Technology.
no, sorry, it's called uh, Starfleet Engineering and Technology. Uh, it's a cool Facebook page. He posts a lot of his stuff on there. This is going to be a phenomenal book. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm enjoying it so much, reading it on my iPad and PDF file. It's like a, I'm, I'm holding a pad and I'm looking at technical schematics and things for Star Trek. It's I love it. It just brings me, sucks me into the world. And I'm already Captain Foley, so I'm like all psychosis and like, I am a Captain Foley. I am in the Star Trek universe. Arr. And now I'm a pilot, pirate, apparently. Arr. I'm done for now. So, guys, stay tuned for that. The store, i got to talk to Sam about it. Hopefully, we'll have it up soon. But, yeah, we'll be taking pre-orders for shirts and things and then ordering the shirts and uh, getting those shipped out to you guys. But it won't be before Christmas as far as getting your item, possibly but for ordering it, but we'll have to see. We're, I'm going to be talking to Samuel in the next few days about that. Actually, tomorrow. Tomorrow we're filming with the Axon Art crew, Alec Peters and Rob Burnett. Hopefully, ho Rob can join Alec for that. Uh, we've got a few things lined up with them. we got some scripts done. We're filming with possibly Dr Doug Drexler next week. So a lot of exciting stuff coming up, plus those special announcements. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Seriously, this is it. I'm done. I will see you guys later. Live long and prosper, and Merry Christmas. Bye.